So at WWDC, Apple announced quite a lot of things and we've already spoken about iOS 13, but the next big thing, especially for me, is iPadOS. A lot of new features have been added to iPadOS and Apple has finally made iPadOS an independent operating system for the iPad. And even though it's a mix between iOS and sort of macOS, but it still is predominantly iOS with certain new features for the iPad and hence they decided to call it iPad OS 13 and not iPad OS 1. So if you have an iPad Pro, uh, the first generation one or the newer generation one and you use Apple Pencil, you'll be able to see faster input capabilities on the Apple Pencil, again on the first generation as well as the newer generation, Apple Pencil 2, and you'll be able to see that the input speed is much faster and the input lag is almost completely removed. It almost seems like you're directly writing on the screen of the iPad. Now this will also come in handy for people who use Sidecar. Now Sidecar will be available for all iPads that support iPad OS, whether it's a newer generation iPad or a previous generation iPad or iPad Pro. Uh, but you'll be able to use iPad Pros with Apple Pencil input on a sidecar with your Mac. So that means that you can use it as a touch tablet and use an Apple Pencil input on a Mac device. So if you're somebody who designs on apps like Illustrator or Photoshop, you'll be able to use an Apple Pencil to directly draw on Illustrator or Photoshop. Now, I've seen this in action and it works great. And I've also tested this out and the input lag is almost negligible. A lot of people will be using this feature instead of buying Wacom tablets. It definitely does not compete with them, but it offers an alternative. And for somebody who already has an iPad and already has a Mac, this will be a feature that a lot of people will use. Now, speaking of Sidecar, Sidecar allows you to connect with any Mac that has Catalina and any iPad that has iPad OS and allows you to extend your screen to the iPad. So if you're somebody who does creative work, like video editing or like I mentioned, Illustrator or Photoshop, you can get a second screen to use that as a multifunctional display. If you have multiple displays on things like video editing, you can have your effects and your transitions on the iPad screen, or you can have your main output video on the iPad screen so that you get more real estate for displays and your secondary display can be shifted to the iPad. This is a really cool feature and a lot of people will end up using this. This was available through third-party applications in the past, but now that Apple supports it natively on their operating systems, it's something that a lot of people will end up using. Also, this works on Wi-Fi as well as wired. So if you wanna connect your iPad to your Mac using a USB-C cable, you can do that. Or if you wanna connect it via Wi-Fi, as an AirPlay display, you'll be able to do that as well. The iPad OS also supports a new layout for the iPad. So all your uh, widgets that used to sit on a separate screen will now be available on the home screen. Uh, again, it's something that uh, makes it more intuitive. There's a lot of real estate on the iPad already for the display. So adding widgets on the home screen allows you to sort of navigate through them. You also get full browser capabilities. So if you open Safari, you can now navigate and browse websites in the full display format versus the mobile format which was available previously. So if you open iGAN.com on Safari on the iPad OS, you'll see the full website and not the mobile website. Another cool thing that Apple has added with iPad OS is multitasking uh, with multi-window support for the same app. While multi-window was there, you could only use it with different apps. Now you can use the same app multiple times in multi windows you can have two instances of safari running or two instances of photos or two instances of notes uh, to improve your multitasking and i think this will come in handy for a lot of people apple has also added a lot of gestures so if you want to cut or copy you can simply drag your finger select the text and pinch in to copy and pinch out to paste there are a lot of other features uh, that are available through gestures and a, a lot of other keyboard shortcuts available for iPad OS to improve productivity. Some of them are as simple as some of the same shortcuts available on Mac, but for iPad OS, they have made some dedicated shortcuts that will make your life easier on the iPad OS. Now, another feature for iPad OS that will make the iPad really usable for somebody like me is external file system support. Now, since the iPad Pro was launched last year, and it has a lot of computational power, it has a lot of processing power, along with a lot of graphics power, it made for a really fantastic video editing device. 
a lot of apps are available for professional video editing on the iPad, but the biggest challenge was external file systems or external storage. But now with file system support on the iPad, you can connect a camera or an external drive directly to your iPad and then access information from your external devices. Now you do have files shown as a finder on a Mac, so you can easily navigate through the file system. You can even copy files onto the iPad directly from uh, external devices like USB flash drives or USB solid state drives, but you can also download applications and download files uh, directly from Safari and you get a dedicated downloads manager and all of those things will be available on the file system manager, which is the files app on iPad OS. Another good thing is that if I'm video editing, I can directly edit off of third party storage. So I don't need to copy files onto the iPad to be able to process them on the iPad. I can access the external drive and possibly use the external drive as a RAID or whatever uh, to directly edit files off the external drive, which will make video editing a lot more simpler for a lot of people. One more thing that Apple has added unintentionally is uh, mouse support. Now, whether you're using a USB mouse or a Bluetooth mouse, this feature is available through accessibility and it is designed for people with limited motor skills, but it is a feature that is quite usable and you can use it uh, on the iPad OS and you can connect a mouse uh, through dongles and this will work with uh, iPads with a lightning port or with iPads with a USB-C port as long as you have a proper dongle to convert it to a USB port. So you can plug in a USB mouse or you can connect the mouse via Bluetooth and use it with the iPad. In general, with whatever we've tested on the new iPad OS, it feels like a more complete operating system for the iPad. It also feels like it finally is getting closer to what you would expect a tablet to do. It is a touch tablet and it does offer a lot of power, processing power, computational power, but it now is much more closer to replacing a full-fledged desktop or a full-fledged laptop for a lot of people and with the word processing capabilities with office apps and office suite already available on ipad iwork applications including pages numbers and keynote already available on an ipad it makes for a really good document processing device or a content creation device along with a content consumption device and for a lot of people the ipad may replace the macbook even though apple doesn't intend to replace the macbook with the new ipad os for a lot of people it may simply allow you to do that. Uh, the iPad OS will also allow us to do video editing on the fly and I might use that as a device in the future to do video edits whenever I travel because it's that much lighter and that much more compact and easier to carry than a MacBook. That's it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed all the details of the iPad OS, uh, some of the exciting things that we are looking forward to. Uh, if you did, don't forget to smash the like button, hit the subscribe button if you're not already a part of Team IGAN. This has been Bharat Nakwa. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Let's go. So turn it up. Hey.